when one looks at the Word of God, there are times that we don't understand. There are entities in our lives that causes us to be confused. I don't know about you, but have you ever thought of how God, God, God came into existence? I'm going to ask you that question again. Have you ever tried to think of how God, God, God came into existence? Come on now, y'all going to have to talk to me. I'm going to say it one more time. We know how we came into existence. But the question is, how did God, 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 and God come into existence? That's a mystery. What is that, everybody? That is a mystery. And the reason why it is a mystery is because we have been taught and we have been trained in our minds that something has to come from something. Isn't that right? And yet we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God said I was in existence when nothing was there. And because God was in existence when nothing was there, we have to also understand that because God was in existence when nothing was there, we have to also understand that God had to create us. And when God created us, he knew that we would mess up. And because God knew that we would mess up, God had to accept God to say, okay, I'm going to forgive them for messing up because I am like them. I am like who? I am like them. So then, before God could ever create us in his isness and in his nothingness, God had to make a plan prior to him being able to create us and being able to accept us, and he had to also split himself so that you and I could be redeemed back and so that he could accept God for God and in God. Okay. What are you talking about? Well, Hebrews, what book did I say? Hebrews 3 says, and now we're talking about mankind's situation. Whose situation we're talking about? We're talking about mankind's situation in Hebrews 3, 26. If that had been the case, he would have had to sacrifice himself repeatedly throughout the course of history. Understand, God is not in history. History is his story. God is not in what, everybody? History. History is in his story, but instead he sacrificed himself once and for all, summing up all the other sacrifices in this sacrifice of himself, the final solution of sin. When I look at Genesis 1-1, what do I see? There is one thing that I see. It says, God. What does it say? What does it say? Does it say God the Father? Does it say God the Son? It says what? Watch this. For this God created the heavens and earth. When did God create the heavens and the earth? After he existed? Come on, talk to me. After he existed? How many say yes? Y'all better raise your hand because he did exist. He had to exist. Okay, which means, get, get this good, which means 
that there had to be a diversity inside of creating the world because God knew that when he created the world, he was going to put man inside of it, and he knew that man was going to mess up. Are you all in here? Which means, get this good. I told you this in Deceptions 1, but I don't know whether or not all of you really caught it. When you look at the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments are the precepts of God, right? They are the character of God, right? And whenever God's character came into existence, write this down, whenever God's character came into existence, uh, God came tagging inside of his character. If I'm wrong, tell me. Do I need to say it again? Say it one more time. Listen, listen. When God ever came, whenever God came into existence, his character was invited within him in the beginning of his existence. Is that more clear? His character was embodied inside of him, which meant that when I read and look at Exodus chapter 20, which is all of God's character, what did I discover? I discovered that six of God's character was inside of him and more of what he wanted mankind to do was on the inside of him than what we were to do to obey him. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet. Who does that? But who, who is that? Who is that for? I don't hear y'all. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Who is that for? Is that for God? It's for who? So then the last six commandments, which was more than half of God's character, deals with us. So watch this. So then there is no way in the world God could ever have fulfilled himself unless he created man. That ought to preach. But that ain't preaching because y'all ain't catching it. In other words, I'm saying this. In other words, for God to fulfill himself, he had to create man because inside of his character were six commandments that had nothing to do with him. Had nothing to do with him. So in order for him to be satisfied, he had to create you and I. And because he had to create you and I, he had to actually have a battle within himself. So God says, let us. What? Look, let's go to the text now. Let's go to the text. First in the text, you see God created the what? All you see, all you don't see, earth was a soup of nothingless, look at the screen, a bottomless what? Emptiness and inky. Now watch this. God's, God's what? God's what? What is the spirit for? The spirit guides you. The Spirit instructs you, but the Spirit don't save you. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. The Spirit instructs you. The Spirit directs you. The Spirit deals with your conscience, but the Spirit doesn't save you because the Spirit can be everywhere. And a lamb cannot be. Church folks still ain't click rewind. The spirit cannot be. I mean, the lamb cannot be everywhere. The spirit can be what? 
The reason why the Spirit can be everywhere is because the Spirit shed no blood. And without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. Are y'all in here? Y'all didn't get that. Now watch this. So then, God did what? Moved God the Holy Spirit. But God and God, there's a distinction. God created the heavens and the earth. And then it says, the Spirit did what? Two things. God and Holy Spirit. In verses 2 through 25, God says God. But when he gets to verse 26, God says, let us. Wait a minute. First he says, in the beginning, God. Then he says, the spirit move. Then he gets to verse 26 and he says, let us. Who is us? Huh? Them. But them is one. <laughs> them. But them is us. So you have God the Father, God the Son, who is not in action except for in creation. Because he's hoping beyond a shadow of a doubt that man tells the devil to go to hell. But he knows that man's going to mess up. So he has to have another plan. And the plan is, uh, before the foundation of the world was, there was a battle between God and God and God. So God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, the Spirit moved up on the face of the earth. Uh, but in Genesis 20, let us make man. John 8, 42. If God were your father, said Jesus, you would love me. For I came from God and arrived here. I didn't come on my own. He sent me. Who is he? I didn't hear y'all. He is what, everybody? Who sent him? So God sent who? <laughs> y'all getting intelligent now. So God sent God. Where was the Holy Spirit? Nowhere except up there because the Holy Spirit did not have to be used at that point. Huh? Am I too deep this morning? All right. Okay. Did you get that? So then understand. Understand. Perfect. Perfectly, I want y'all to get this real good. God sends God. Why does God send God? Because one part of God has to keep what? His sanity. It's just like, I love Kareem to death. But I got rules. Brethren, y'all got rules at your house? Do y'all, do come on now. Do y'all have rules at, ladies, do y'all have rules at your house? Come on, talk to me. Y'all have rules at your house. But sometimes when they mess up, mother or daddy intercedes. 
And there's what we call a little bit of mercy. So now, the person who has made the rule and the regulation and the law has to step aside while the other administer punishment. So that the one who's getting a behind whipped can come back into grace because the law still has to be fulfilled. But there has to be somebody who steps out that's part of me. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody that's part of me has to say, okay, Kareen and messed up. Go ahead on, give her the whipping. Spank her good. But is it all right if she's still a part of the family? <laughs> Do y'all see that? So then now, God says, I send God. In other words, I didn't come on my own. I didn't just show up because I just wanted to show up. I came because I was sent. What were you sent for? What was he sent for? To, I can't hear y'all. What was he sent for? He was sent to save what? He was sent to save us. Now, put a pin right there. You already know your pastor is not traditional. Y'all already know that, don't you? Y'all already know that. Now, 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 I want those of you to understand Baptismal vows, I wouldn't call them that. I would call them marriage vows. I would call them what, everybody? And the reason why I would call them marriage vows is because I am committing myself to Christ. I'm not committing myself to the church. I'm committing myself to Christ. And I believe that Christ died so that I could have a right to the... So when you stand up there, and I'm, I just, it's, just like, it's just like a marriage. Do you take so-and-so and so in sickness and in health? Till death do you part. So help you go. The baptismal vow, that's what they call it. But as far as I'm concerned, it's the same wedding vow. Because God, you already know I've been chipping out and dipping out on you. <laughs> you already know I've been messing up. But thanks be to God, I'm trying my best in your name. I wish somebody would talk to me. I'm trying my best in your name by your blood. I just messed up the other day, but I didn't confess my sins. And because of your shed blood on Calvary, somebody ought to shout up in here. I got victory I can overcome. That's what that's all about. Then here comes the other prophet. Jesus answered, I told you, but you don't believe. Everything I have done, now get this good. Everything that I have done has been, look at the, What does authorize mean? I just love the way y'all think. Y'all think in the right way. Approved. That means it was approved prior. Come on now. It, it, it was approved what, everybody? It was approved prior, which means then that because it was approved prior, he knows he's doing the what? The right thing. Boy, y'all got, he would do, now watch this. Actions 
that speak louder than words. If I tell Sister Cox how much I love her, but don't ever show it, if I don't go to work, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. If I don't care how many nails she get in the tire, if I don't finally show up or tell her, call AAA, <laughs> or go to discount tire, what does that, what does that say? And she don't ever fix me some biscuits. <laughs> like I like to have this coming Sunday after I work out. So I can eat the rest of them figs, Sister Phil. <laughs> and she tells me, I ain't fixing them today. Or she don't ever fix them. What does that say? To I can't hear you, brother. She don't care. Is that right, ladies? Come on, ladies, is that right? Oh, bless his holy name, huh? I see some of you ladies ain't opening your mouth. <laughs> I, 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 in other words, in other words, God says he is showing actions. Now, here comes the very moment that the Holy Spirit shows up. Matthew 3, 16 and 17. The moment Jesus came up out of the what? The skies did what? And he what? What did he see? It looked like a descending and what? And along with the a what? Wait, stop right there. How many? God's you seeing and hearing from so far. Now, we're hearing from two. We already have one, but we're talking about the voice. The voice says who? What? What voice is that? God the what? See how smart y'all are? Then you see a what? That's the what? That's how many? And then you have one, because you say, this is my beloved son. You have one in the water. How many is that? So guess what? I can't have the Holy Spirit and don't have Jesus. And I can't have Jesus and don't have the Holy Spirit. And I can't have Jesus and don't have God the Father. So when you talk, people talk about Christ and Christ only. Uh-uh. Because even though Christ saves, he don't forgive. He intercedes. Did y'all get that? I'm, I'm, I, that's deep. I'm going to say it one more time. Christ does not forgive. He intercedes. Who does he intercede to? And when the Father sees, when the Father sees him, he then gets the answer to what? Forgive. So then if I say all I need is Jesus Christ, I'm in trouble. Because Jesus Christ cannot forgive me. Are y'all, y'all better write that down. Did y'all get that? Oh, it's almost time for me to quit. I got a few more minutes. Yeah, 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 I, I got to quit. So you'll come back next week. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sister Morris, you sit down. <laughs> Listen, listen, at 
that point, the Holy Spirit shows up at baptism. But he does not have any other function at that time. That's his first signal that there is another entity of the Godhead in the plan of salvation. Are y'all up in here? Because the whole... Girl, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you is lost. The Holy Ghost don't save you either. <laughs> Look at here. Look at here. The Holy Ghost cannot save you. The function of the Holy Ghost is to direct you into all truth so that your hips can have an understanding of what it is and what it takes to be saved. That's all he does. That's why he's everywhere. Again, he sheds no blood for you. Did y'all hear that? Now watch this, watch this, watch, watch this real closely. In Romans, it says that we know not what to pray for, but the Holy Come on, talk. The Holy Ghost interprets our moans and our groans. So then, I just can't have Jesus because Jesus does not hear my prayers unless the Holy Ghost interprets my prayers and takes it to him. Oh, y'all not up here. We is one. We is one. But we still has three functions. Yeah, say that, turn to your neighbor and say, we is one. But we have three functions. Now y'all say it like y'all really know how to say it. Now here we go. One, two, three. Boy, I'm telling you what, y'all, tough today. All right. All right. Now, the Holy Spirit says to me, I'm going to interpret what you need, which means I've got to accept that whatever the Holy Spirit interprets to Jesus I got to have the faith to believe it's the right thing. So some of us running around here talking about been praying for this and praying for that. We ain't got it. I'm going to tell you some of the reasons why you haven't got it. You just keep on coming in this series. You will understand, brothers and sisters, that it's the Holy Spirit that has to take my prayers beyond this ceiling. Because the moment I think I don't need Jesus, or I just need Yahweh. What's a Yahweh? God. But he's in his function. Watch this. Daddy, can I, can I take the car and go out? What did your mama say? (laughs) 
There's a what? Girl, you, you, you come on up here to the pastor right quick. Run on up here right quick. Come on, let me see you run. Let's give her a hand. Come on, come on right up here. And say it real loud. There's a what? There's a chain. There is a chain of what? There is a chain of command. If the chain of com- get this good, if the chain of command has been broken, you will receive absolutely nothing. If the chain of command has been broken, you will receive absolutely nothing. So if I, he teaches us to pray, our Father, which art in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But who has to intercept it first? The Holy Spirit! That is the function. So then, God the Father says, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. The Holy Spirit comes down like a dove, and Jesus Christ is in the water. We is one, but we three in what? Function. Ephesians 4, 6 says, one what? And father of what? One what, everybody? And what? All right, let me ask the question. What is the function of God the Father? To what? To forgive, because he is the what? He's the law. What is he, everybody? He's the one who gives the favor to forgive. What is the function of Jesus? To intercede and redeem, because without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. What is the function of the Holy Spirit? Well, how y'all so smart? So if anybody asks you, say, listen, you got to have Jesus. And Jesus, that's all you need. You're supposed to have enough sense to try to explain to them that they need more than Jesus. Because you should have written it down. <laughs> John 17, 21, they that all may be one as what? Father are in and I in. That's why I kept telling you, we is one. They, that they also may be one in what? That the world may, that you, the world must believe that you sent me. This morning, as I close, I make a trend of thought and I make a decision. My decision is to understand that God had to make an avenue just for me. And this avenue was made before I was ever created. Matter of fact, before even the world was created. And I understand that because of God's character, 
10 of his characteristics was embodied within him. Only four deals with our relationship to God. And therefore, there's no way in the world that God would have been comfortable without creating us. Isn't that beautiful? Yet within the confines of that thought, he knew we were going to mess up. And so, I'm like the song that Isaac Hayes used to sing. I know, I know you young folk don't know that song, but the song, the name of the song is I Stand Accused of Loving You. Some parts of the song says, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't mean to do nobody harm, but the deeper, the more I think about you, the, it's like falling in love, the, it's like falling in quicksand, the deeper, the deeper you, come on, help me here, the more I, the deeper I sink, the quicker, it's like quick, being in love is like being in quicksand. The more I fall in love, the deeper you sink. See, that, that's, that's what you call natural rapping like that. See, y'all got that other stuff, but we had the tight stuff, girl. Y'all hear me, don't you? <laughs> and so, <laughs> I got to laugh myself. <laughs> And so, within the confines of that, I should be able to raise my hands and just like this and say, thank you, Lord, for preparing the way for me that I might be saved. No matter what I've done, no matter where I'm going, because there is a shelter around me so that if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I'm wondering right now, is there anybody in here who knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has given you a victory? If he's given you victory, you ought to stand on your feet and just wave your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. And because of that, I'm saved. No matter what I've done, no matter where I, I'm going, no matter what I'm passing through, I may be catching some terrible mess right now. I might be having some terrible issues in my life right now, but I know I have a father who cares for me. And there's a song that says, take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. That, that's, just, that's, just a little, that's just a little song. And the song goes like this. Uh, if the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold and you have to get along with me fast just remember in his word how he said the little birds or take your burden to the Lord and uh, leave it there. Do y'all remember that? Why don't you leave it there? Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Sing it with me one more time. Leave it there. Leave it there. 
Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. I'm wondering if there's somebody in the audience right now, you've learned something. And you feel that this is the place where you need to be. And you want to become a part of the family of this church. And you're not a part of the family of this church right now. I'm going to just ask you to raise your hand. Is there a hand right now? God has been so good to you. And you want to make a decision to follow Christ all the way. Is there a hand? Come on right now if there's a hand. You may be seated. 